Welcome back, family, to the Stick Brims and Stiletto Show. Today, we have a special show, Stick Brims and Stilettos Man Cave Conversations. We have two special guests on the show who I'm allowed to introduce themselves and tell you a real quick 30 uh, second elevator about themselves. I'm going to start to my right with Mr. Earn. Hi, I'm Earn. Thanks for allowing me to come be a special guest on the show. I'm a uh, I'm looking forward to the topic, the conversations, a little bit about myself. So, born and raised in Philly, been out here in Delaware for the last, you know, 15 plus years. Uh, met some great folks since my time in Delaware, in particular Donna and John. A little bit about me: uh, married, two kids, three kids, two grown kids, one minor, 18. Um, that's it. That's about me. I'm here. All right, and my guy John to my left. All right, what's up? What's up, family? What's up, Sticks, Brims, the little family? Thank you, Don, for having us. What's good, Earn? Name is John Trevor. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, born and raised in Philly, been in Delaware for a good long while, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, cutting it up and getting into it. Thank you. So, so SBS family, it's your guy, Chief. You know what time it is, so grab your glasses and your sticks, and let's get ready to smoke. Another hot topic. All right, welcome back, family. And so, yes, we have our guests here, brothers Earn and brother John. So we're going to get into it real quick. So listen, brothers, you know, We've seen a lot on social media lately about the state of relationships, the state of <laughs> dating, the state of being single. And even in some cases, we look at what just happened with Joe Smith and his wife and the situation between Tyrese and Samantha Lee has continued to resurface. So let's just dig into it real quick, man. And um, let's just start off with this question, man. What's going on with the state of relationships, I, I'll start in off the black community, and, and oh, and let me let me let me not forget the whole cheesecake factory oh, wow. video, and then the sister who followed up and said, "Don't even holler at her unless you're coming with five hundred dollars." Okay, so so I'll start. So I think the state of um, black relationships, we had we had a, a unique place in time um, in twenty twenty three, and so I think there is a lot of good that that's happening in black relationships and also there's a lot of bad. And so I think the good is that we are now having these conversations. And so I think anytime that, you know, black folks can have conversations and be open and honest about where they are, what their wants and needs are, I think that's a great thing. Now where I think um, things could be better is I think social media um, is misguiding folks in terms of um, fake versus the reality. And when we talk about the cheesecake factor, you know, we were having this conversation before we, you know, we got on camera, was that, you know, hey, when did all of a sudden cheesecake factor become something that you know, you would never take a person to? Me personally, cheesecake factor is one of my favorite restaurants, um, yeah. so I love cheesecake factory. Um, with that being said, it's not an inexpensive place to go. So all this that you know, I'm above cheesecake factory, which is insane to me. And as I said, me and John were talking the other day, you know. The median income in America for an Afro American man is less than forty thousand, and for a black woman it's about thirty six, thirty five thousand. So collectively, we're talking about a household of seventy five thousand. So when all of a sudden taking a woman on a date, which is even to get to know someone, that you know a hundred dollars is not enough money to be spent. That to me is absolutely insane. Got it, John. Waiting on this, brother. What's going on, man? With the state of uh, relationships, dating, and, and and all this other stuff that's going on. All right, well, I'm going to travel to New York by way of New Jersey with my answer, but when I get there, you'll understand why. <laughs> All right. Okay, so what was the big drug in the 70s? Uh, Cocaine. Yeah, heroin. Heroin. <laughs> heroin. What was the big drug in the 80s? Crack. All right, now, what's the big drug in the 2000s? Fentanyl. Attention. Attention. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, uh, uh, okay. okay. I'll you. Attention. I'll you. Okay, so I, when, I, 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 I'm with the metaphor here. Let's go. All right, so when you look at Social media, and you made this point earlier, Ernie, when you look at social media, everybody now feels that they're a star. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, you, you express that through uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, what have you. 
And from that perceived stardom by way of followers, yeah. okay, people now feel that they got options because everybody's, you know, all you got to do is wear, all, all, all you got to do is have your titties out a little bit, have your cleavage out, put on a cat suit, uh, uh, change your outfit every day, uh, you know, have somebody video walking, video you doing the slow walk and all of a sudden, and now you got fans. And with fans comes the perception of options. Right. And so therefore, if I'm going to allow you, the fan who jumped in my inbox, to come check me and come get at me, all right, I've uh, determined that this is who I am or this is who I think I am. And therefore, uh, I'm above the Cheesecake Factory. Yes. All right. So if you want to date me as a fan, you have to show your appreciation monetarily by taking me to the most expensive restaurant that anybody can think of. Right. And what they don't understand, they don't understand a couple of things when they do this. Number one, most black women don't understand a black man's money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -oh. All right. Explain that, Jack. Right. Right. Yeah. Most, most black, black women, women don't understand a black man's money. Man, right. Dig into that. Yeah. Most black women don't understand a black man's money. They, they, they look at uh, they, they, they have a fantasy perspective as to what the average black man's money looks like. Yes. OK. And so those brothers that can afford to do those kinds of things. I think we talked about Stake 48 as mm -hmm. an example. And when you took your family out, Ernie, mm -hmm. which you spent about you, you spent about sixteen hundred oh, stacks. Sixteen hundred. Yeah. You know, right. again, so, it was, so but many, but how many just family somebody members. Did you spend sixteen hundred dollars on that Stake 48? Seven. Wow. All right. Okay. So that's six. Yeah. So that's sixteen hundred. That's sixteen hundred stacks with seven people. So that's going to average about two hundred dollars a person or something yes. like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, for a brother to put together at minimum a four hundred dollar night for a lady he's just interviewing, because mm -hmm. we talking first date here. The premise is first date. Mm -hmm. All right. And she's interviewing him once again. A brother who has it like that is the exception and the anomaly. Correct. By far and away, not the norm. Correct. Okay. So she knows that she ain't got it like that. Right. She couldn't take him to stake 48 like right. that. And when you and so when you demand that, when you when you do demand that as a sister of a of, of a brother out here, what's what's your work? What are you bring to the table? Mm. I mean, mm. uh Last time you checked, who called you? Good. Who, they who, look good. They shape nice. Yeah. They look good. They smell good. That's what they bring to the table, brother. And then um, the bonuses, they educated and, you know, they got they have good jobs themselves. Um, that's what they bring to the table. I mean, that, I, that's I, I, that, I suppose. that's the perception. That's not the reality. Yeah. Okay. The, okay. Rea the reality says. The reality, Ernie. The reality and, and, says, and last time you looked, they, ain't nobody called you Jessica Pearson. Uh, you know, she fine, too. But at the same token, she got her name on that law firm. Right. Okay, so you got to be mindful of who you are, what you bring into the table before you demand of him uh, what you expect for him to bring to the table. So social media is one thing, right? And, you know, all these perceptions. And we got to be careful with social media because we also find out that some of this stuff is staged. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these people are doing things for views and mm -hmm. it's all choreographed. Mm -hmm. um, but... Where did these where 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 did these expectations these uh, Ern, you have how many sons? I have two sons. All right, so now um, three sons. I'm sorry, three, three sons. sons. Three so, sons. So and I have three sons. Yes. So we have to think about in 2023 what the conversations look like with our sons when it when we start talking about dating young ladies mm -hmm. and you know our sons are now whether they like it or not are competing against these images that live in the minds mm -hmm. of many of these young ladies because this is what they're seeing. So so one of the things I do when I'm having this conversation with my sons is we talk about managing expectations. Mm. What are my expectations of you and what are your expectations of me? Because if the expectations of me are to take you to, you know, Stake 48 and, you know, Del Frisco's and things like that, though, so just understand, you know, there comes expectations with those type of meals or opportunities or special occasions. And so if you're not willing to meet the expectations, you should be a little bit more mindful. Can you enumerate some uh, of those expectations? Do you but, think you should? <laughs> but let me, well, let me just say, <laughs> drinks and steaks ain't free. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So All everything right. comes at a cost. Yes. 
or including or, the dinner. Or so, or or so, because again, I was having this conversation uh, earlier today that relationships are transactional. Oh yeah. Right. Again, okay. Yeah. You are expecting something from me, and I'm expecting something in return from you. Now, again, we determine as adults what what's being exchanged. Gotcha. But at the end of the day, it's not a one-way relationship where one person puts out and the other person receives. To me, now that person comes across as selfish. Okay, John. You know, I I, I think that. Going in, you understand what the expectations are because you went in with expectations. Absolutely. As a young lady. Absolutely. So if you want him to invest in your expectations, you certainly uh, you, 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 you certainly should appreciate that there is the expectation of some reciprocity. Yes. Okay. And, uh, you know, it can't be understated that relationships are transactional, especially at the very beginning. Yes. Now, let me let me kind of shift gears a little bit. So. Uh, I've done well in life, you know, as as you brothers have. Yes. All right. This and, is your and, and, man cave, by the way, family. This is John's man cave, and this is one <laughs> hell of a man cave. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Absolutely. All right. But, you know, to that point, you know, once again, I go back to the exception, not the rule. Now, everything that I've built in life and every great thing that I've done, uh, I've been all over the world, but everywhere I've been, I've been with my wife. Everything that I've done and everything that I've built and everything that I've accomplished, I've done that while I've been married to this woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she can go to stake 48 every time she's ready to put a coat on because she's earned that. Amen. Okay, and, uh, you know, that is uh, one of the fringe benefits of what we have built together. She's mm -hmm. earned that. But I'll tell you what, that ain't where we went the first date. Right. All right. So, you know, this is a prime example of two people who have built something. So, wait a minute. Time out. Yeah. Time out. Because you did just switch the narrative a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me this big, beautiful home mm -hmm. that I'm sitting in right now, where this basement square footage is the size of the average row home uh, from where I'm from. And I ain't even being funny. I'm being real. But, but hold up. Wait a minute. So the woman that you're married to, you didn't have to already have all of this? You didn't already have to have... The 6,000 square foot the, 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 home? The, right, right. You didn't have to already have a 6,000 square foot home. You didn't have to already have to be uh, 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 driving the, the slick OG vehicles. You didn't already have to be able to take her to a restaurant and spend $400 because you know what they're saying right now? they saying don't date outside of your income. Nope. So Ooh. I see some stuff they say. I see some stuff they say don't even ask nobody out on, for, out on a date unless your income is at a certain level. So... What it's saying to me is, is that all the value is going to be placed on your wallet, material things, your wallet. So it's a beautiful thing. I've, I've had a chance to break bread with you and your wife. So to hear you say we built this together. Let me tell you, it's going to be some women out there, right? <clears throat> that's going to say your wife is foolish mm -hmm. for building with you because in their mind, you're supposed to have all this stuff built and just tell her, hey, come on in. Enjoy all of the fruits of my labor. Well, as I said earlier, I think um, statistics, numbers don't lie. Again, when we're talking about black folks, we need to talk about, again, what does the average black man earn and what does the average black woman earn? And based on those statistics, you're not going to stake 48. You're going to Applebee's two for 20. And this brings me to the part of the conversation about what, what the conversation. Now, you have a daughter. Mm -hmm. You and I, we have sons. I have a daughter as I well. Have a daughter as well. I have a daughter as well. Three, three boys and a girl. So now, as responsible parents, and, and we're going to parent until the last day because they our kids. Mm -hmm. So right. So my oldest is thirty four, but I'm still his parent. Mm -hmm. So now, but I'm looking at my sixteen year old mm -hmm. in this world of expectations, unrealistic expectations, increasingly mm -hmm. about the type of conversations we have to have with them. And about the norms and the mores and the value systems that we want to make sure that they don't deviate too far from based on this peer pressure and based on this foolishness that we're seeing out here in this, this social media uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So with everything that you said, that's what we got to be preparing our sons for. Mm -hmm. And that's the realistic uh, conversation we have to have with our daughters. Like, don't pay this foolishness no, no attention. Don't have... And I don't know why it just seemed like it's our culture, bro. I don't know if any other culture have women telling younger women, 
Yeah, you don't be dating somebody. You don't get to know somebody unless they in this tax bracket and unless they can take you to this restaurant. Now, I don't know what happens well, in a, other I'm cultures. About, well, I'm about, well, look, I'm about to hit a nerve. All right. So, uh, and, and, and with, the, with respect to the ladies, especially, put your seatbelts on. All right. Because I'm about to hit a nerve. Now, uh, my daughter has seen me uh, be the chairman of you know, our church's father-daughter dance committee. And uh, that father-daughter dance uh, during the period of time that we were up and running those years, it was uh, Wilmington, Delaware's signature event, mm -hmm. Bethel AME father-daughter dance. And we put that program together because it was important for young ladies to your direct point to see that, you know, this is how you are to be valued when a man is privileged to be in your company. I want to underscore the word privileged. You know, this is what the bar is. This is what the expectation is. So that when you uh, go out there and you begin to date and what have you, you've seen what it looks like in terms of how you've been, you should be treated from your father. Mm. Your father told you that. So some little joker out here can't get his expectations met by buying you a Big Mac and fries. Right. Okay. So, you know, she's under, she understand. I told my daughter, whenever you go out on a date, you better never touch a door, car door, Mall door, restaurant door included. Mm -hmm. um, you know, her little boyfriend's over here. I told her my daughter better never touch a door in your company. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's the bar and that's the standard, and I've established that. Now, this is why I told you put on your seatbelts. <laughs> okay, bring it, John. All right, Let's go. we okay. got smoke. A lot of these social media thoughts, and I will call it that. Uh -oh. A lot of these social media call girls, and I will call it that, don't have fathers. Mm. Okay. Mm. Shots fired. All right. So when you see a lot of this, when you see a lot of you, you see the same chick every day, day in and day out. So attention drunk that I didn't get enough likes today. I got to take off more clothes today than mm. I did yesterday. Mm. 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 All right. I wanted I didn't eclipse that number of likes that I got yesterday. So now I got to go full naked and go only fans now. Mm. You know, now oh. TikTok and Instagram ain't enough. I got, oh. I got I got I got to go hard in the paint. And a lot of these young ladies, unfortunately, didn't have fathers in their lives because you have a daughter, Ernie, you have a daughter, and, and I have two daughters. We would not tolerate that. No. And when you talk about, you know, you're 35 years old. I mean, you got a 35-year-old, who, who, your son, who you still parent. Yes. Okay, we're still going to be parenting. I'm a parent man until he's 55, 60. We're going to still parent our 35-year-old daughters. They're going to know that throughout their entire life, while we're here and long after we're going, that this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. This is not how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. But they don't. But a, but in a lot of cases, young ladies don't have a man in their life that's going to lay down that gauntlet and say that, hey, here's where you draw the line. Mm -hmm. Because I would not have taken because your mother. I would not I would not have met your mother if she was somebody like that. Mm. OK. You wouldn't be here if your mother was somebody like that. OK, so when we talk about all, you know, so when we talk about the presentation you make, hey, listen, you take me out for a nice dinner and uh, maybe we'll meet your expectations of some good sex after that. Mm -hmm. Well, well, like one of my OGs told me, hey, daddy, get you through Saturday. Right. <laughs> what else you is going to be? Exactly. All right. What you got popping exactly. the rest of the week? Right. All right. The rest of the week, can you help me do this? Right. Right. And a lot of cases, the answer is no. So when you talk about, oh, you know, did my wife, you know, did, did my wife come in uh, the door and everything was like this? No, it absolutely wasn't. Everything I have, we built together. I started out with a modest row home. All right. And I thought I was doing my thing. I didn't know what the thing was until I got with her and then we saw other things and did mm. bigger and better things. Mm. And I always tell I always tell people, if you want to be successful and you see four guys over there who's successful, walk among their circle and they will make sure you're the fifth. Mm. By the same token, if you see four assholes over there, walk among their circle and they'll make sure you the fifth. <laughs> Right. OK, so <clears throat> we made sure that we surrounded ourselves by people who were successful. And that's what we gravitated to. And uh, we worked together. 
That mm. was a sister that struggled with me. That was a sister who saw all my baby mama drama that I went through. She saw all the all the all the back and forth to uh, 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 so custody wait a court and child support court. She weathered all of those storms, so wait and now she's reaping the benefits. So wait a minute, hold up, time out. That's the kind of sister brothers that you want to start out with. So hold up, wait a minute, time out. So your wife, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> who again I've met, we we fellowship, wonderful person. But you mean to tell me your wife didn't tell you that you wasn't a man if she did if she had to pay one single bill towards you guys' success? No, nah, no. Nah. Because you know that's another narrative I've heard too. Like uh, if you pay any, if if you allow your woman to pay any bill, then then you're not a man. Well, that's called a sucker. No. Nah, yeah, you're not a man. That's called like this. That's called. Bro, let me tell you something. I I I read, I research, I, I observe all across these platforms, man. But also listen, some of this stuff is being spoken, bro, in 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 different social environments, you know. And I'm trying to figure out. Let me tell you something. You said something that was real key, John. Mm-hmm. That if your wife held this perspective, you all would not have built oh, the life okay. that you built. Earn uh, same with you. Listen. I don't know if either one of you got a chance to read either uh, Barack Obama's books. I was given one of his books as a gift mm-hmm. um, back in 2010. If Michelle Obama had viewed Barry, <laughs> who pulled up in that raggedy ass Flintstone car mm-hmm. to take her out on the first date that he admit didn't even know if he was going to be able to make it to the damn restaurant in that damn raggedy car, mm-hmm. right? If she had held that view, of the 44th president of the United States of America, what the hell could she have built with him and what could he have built with her if she maintained that view? Exactly. And, and when they met, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he was subordinate to her. He was subordinate to her. But let's take it another. Let's yeah. take it, I don't know if you know, if you've ever heard Samuel Jackson tell his story about the addiction yeah. and about his wife staying with him, bro, at his lowest point. Yeah. And the travails that he had before he even met her and linked up with her. Well, I think also, and, and that's another one. I think Denzel. Denzel. Star, I think his wife. Denzel. His wife paid for their first date because he didn't have any money. Hold up, bro. When you start talking about wife paying for something, yeah. man, you but better check. His, you better his girlfriend then. Yeah, his wife yeah. now. You better check out Jeff Bezos. I mean, I know they've gone their separate ways now, right. but you better check out the story of Amazon and who was still going out there making money while he was living a vision inside the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. These crazy perspectives, bro, that are being planted. And this stuff, these are seeds, bro. They're being planted so, and, so, they, and so, they're growing. So that's why I said I think uh, social media, there's a lot of positive and there's also a lot of negative. And I think, you know, you have to be able to weed out the noise because a lot of it's just noise. Yeah. And I think, it's, I think it's misleading a lot of people, men and women. Um, it's sad because at the end of the day, when all the dust settles and... What you really need is you need two people who really care about each other at the core and not what someone has or doesn't have. Um, I think that should be the foundation. I, I agree with you. And again, that's why it is imperative for us to impart wise counsel yes. on young people, not even just our, our kids. Because to your point, John, there's some young people out there who don't have that parental guidance even because just because you got parents don't mean that you have parental guidance you know what I mean Mm -hmm. Um, and there's not a shot at anybody that's just a reality I grew up around situations like that and so that's why it is so imperative man that we impart right the right type of knowledge and it's hard bro to neutralize that nonsense that's going on that you're seeing and so again and and, and not to I mean we all talk understand how important parenting is but it's in our communities it's so important for fathers to be in their daughters and their sons' life. It's important for them to be in their daughter's life because that man, because I have this conversation with my daughter all the time, that man is the only man ever in her life is going to love her unconditionally without any any demands from her. Mm-hmm. Any man other than her father will love her conditionally, right? Mm-hmm. And it's important for my son to understand and how to transactionally. Treat, transactionally, right? <laughs> and with my son, it's important for my son to see how I treat, you know, my wife, right? It's important to see how we interact with the opposite sex. And so in our community, unfortunately, our communities, a lot of um, our youth, they don't have that. So they don't know, right? So they go to social media, they go to friends, they go to the community, they go to, you know, the blind leading the blind, i.e. social media. Right. And I think that becomes a big part of uh, some of the issues that we're seeing in our, in our community. Absolutely. And, and you know, 
it, you know, it's incumbent upon, I think it's incumbent upon men with sell, with sons. Yes. Yeah, I don't have sons, but I think it's incumbent upon men with sons to uh, kind of give their sons some talking points mm-hmm. during those conversations, during those first date conversations. You know, mm-hmm. I, think it's, I think it's fair game to ask a young lady, okay, so where do you draw your cues from as far as your perception and understanding of what a man is? Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. are raised wow. in a Shots fatherless, wow. <laughs> if you're raised in a fatherless household, yeah. who told you what a man was? Yeah. Okay? At, you know, at, at, at the same token, women who are raising sons, mm. okay? Let's talk about Really, it. really be honest when you tell the story or you, or, you, or you make the proclamation that his father isn't, isn't in his life. What role did you play in that regard? Mm. Okay, and be honest about it mm-hmm. because, you know, not, not, to, not to quote any old cliches, but there's his side, her side, and the truth. Mm. When you tell your side, are you telling your side or are you telling the truth? Are you telling his truth? Mm. Okay. So, you know, a lot, of, a, a, a lot of what we see out here in the development of the, a, a, a lot of these uh, social media, quote unquote, celebrities are self-inflicted wounds in the black community. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't mind telling my story. My, my oldest daughter, you know, her mother did everything within her power to make sure that I was not part of our daughter's life. Mm. Okay. I didn't find out my daughter was on the planet until two days after she was born. Mm. And when I found out, I went straight down. The, I, went, I went straight down the family court. Okay. Nobody had to tell me to do that because I was determined that my daughter was not going to be a statistic. And me and her mother went to court 26 times. And 20 of them was initiated by me because I was going to demand that I was present and playing a, a, a significant, equitable role in her upbringing. And she's all the better for it as a result of that. Wow. Okay. That's, that's so, good stuff. You know, so a lot of these things don't have to be. But, I, but again, a lot of what you see out there on social media in the way that some of these young ladies present themselves in our community. Mm -hmm. Because you would never have seen that in Dorothy Dandridge's uh, era. Mm. You know, you would have never seen anything like that. It's it's funny, my wife talks about that in in TV and video, is that uh, if you look at nine women of color, someone's always coming to praise them and put them on a pedestal. Exactly. But in our communities, someone needs to save them. Mm. Mm. And that's a big difference. Wow, wow. Yeah. To your point, John, um, I so my 34-year-old and my 30-year-old, my two oldest children, um, I gained full soul, physical custody of them when they were seven and four. And um, I did when my daughter was I, nine. Yeah, I was I, I was a real single dad. Like some guys right. say I'm a single dad oh. because they single and they got kids. Right. No, I was a real single dad. Like when the dinner got cooked, all three of us ate. Right. When the doorknob turned at the end of the day, all three of us were walking back in the house. And I'm going to tell you, man, I had some skinny years, brother. Oh, yeah. Financially, I had some skinny years in terms of barely getting over that hurdle of stress. My career field was law enforcement. Uh, so that's you, one. But you were still taking the ladies to Stake 48. No, nah, I wasn't taking no damn body to Stake 48. <laughs> and matter of fact, if we had some stank, some steak, it was probably some flank steak. It was some steakums. Yeah, it was some steakums. <laughs> and put it on a roll, and you gonna like me because you like me, right? But 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 for real though, man, um, that was a rewarding time. But I'll be BSing you if I say it wasn't also a very challenging time Absolutely. in my life raising my son and my daughter as a single black man all the way 100%. They wasn't spending time at auntie house. My mother will tell you, hey, I, I'm not the grandmother that's the babysitter, right? So mm-hmm. everybody's grandmother and mother different. So so I had to figure it out. And it just, and, and I still had, I had to create time management but I still had to have a social life, man. Yeah. Be, be damned somebody tell me when I've been doing everything I got to do for weeks upon weeks for my children, be damned somebody tell me, yeah, but you shouldn't be dating because you ain't in a certain income level. So once you get your money up, then you should ask somebody on a date. Oh, that, I, that I should be deprived, right, mm-hmm. of, of some social existence existence and maybe even building a, a companionship and so these are the things man that are very important again 
as we talk to young people? So, so the bigger question, so we identify some of the issues, right? And as we see, there are a handful, right? How do we turn a corner? How do we fix them, right? Where do we start, right? So, because I oftentimes had this conversation with folks, you know, if someone said, hey, okay, I'm going to give you a crystal ball and give me three things, how do you fix our community? Certain parts of our community are so dysfunctional, I wouldn't even know where to start. I think that's an honest answer. Wouldn't know where to start. I think people that tell you that they got all the answers are, are, are people that are full of nonsense and BS, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's education, um, I don't know if it's social economics, I don't know if it's... I think collectively we can come together and, and do things, uh, you know, that might be able to help turn that corner. But again, um, I think anybody that, that, that would submit to you that they have the magic answer to a lot of the, the ills and a lot of challenges that we have in our community are people that, uh, you know, just bring you, you know, pixie dust or whatever. But mm -hmm. we do have to start somewhere. somewhere. I think we can all agree on that. But mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, man. Well, because because I like that. I'd like to re respond to your question. And, and go ahead, John. Just, just give it a thought. Not, not to cut you off. Don't no, me. go ahead, man. Um, when you when you talk when you talk about where we start, I mean, you are truly talking about addressing a societal ill. Mm -hmm. All right. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But I think that where you start and there's many pathways to start I think at the very root of it it's willing to be invested in your community because the community mm -hmm. is, is is the thing that's suffering from the ill mm -hmm. that societal ill one of the things that uh, I've been doing and I've been doing this at least for the past uh, eight well, probably since my daughter my, my 17 year old was a baby uh, is uh, I've been I've been trying to do my part along with other people who are on my board of directors, my nonprofit's board of directors, to make sure that children in the inner city uh, who are disenfranchised uh, receive Christmas every year. And I don't right. want to interject. Yeah. Shout out. Your toy drive is absolutely uh, Tell the audience about your organization, the name of your organization yes, and what you do, man. Yeah. So I'll, I'll name the organization, but I want, I, want, I want the audience to understand why we do it. And what we do is we get the entire wish list of those children and we pair them with donors who fulfill the entire wish list of that particular child. And the reason why we do that is because, uh, at, at least in the, in, in, in the Delaware public school system, they're intermingled with where you have children who are going to class with, with, with students who are affluent mm -hmm. and students who have nothing at all. Mm -hmm. But every child has the right to feel that they they have an equitable upbringing, mm -hmm. and every child uh, should be be raised to feel like they matter. Mm -hmm. Because if they feel like they matter, then that means that you matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you raise a child to feel like they don't matter, you then don't matter. when I'm out in the street and I see you, you don't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a child is going to come up and they're going to go one of two different ways. There's not a third path. There's only there's only two paths. You, 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 got, you got a child that's going to come up and they're going to go the right way or they're going to go the wrong way. So if you get them at their if, if you get them at their if, 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 you, if you get them at their most impressionable age, that's going to say a lot. I mean, you know, I'm sitting here. I'm 50. I just turned 58. I'll never forget when I was in sixth grade when a, when a, when a teacher invested in me that way. Came all the way out, you know, you know, Caucasian teacher and her boyfriend came all the way out to uh, 68 North Salvage Street and what I mean, I mean, I mean, 28 North Salvage Street in West Philly and took me to the Philadelphia Museum of Art because she knew I liked to draw. Mm. She said, OK, well, if you like art that much, then let's expose you some of the great masters. Let's show you Picasso, Rembrandt, Clint, Cezanne and all of those. Let's show you abstract impressionism and so on and so forth. And that changed the way that I drew. That changed the way that I saw art. And I always told myself one day I'm going to go to the Louvre in Paris. I've already done that and I took my daughter with me and she's had that exposure. I was blessed to do that. So I think that when you talk about where we start, it starts with a genuine from the heart investment in your community. Some kind of way, shape, form or fashion. You may say that investment and you may and certainly Don, you may say that investment is mentorship. Mm -hmm. OK, but that's still affecting the community mm -hmm. 
at, at, at kids at an impressionable level. All that matters. So we can talk about it and we can talk about it till we're blue in the face. We need to do this. We need to do that. Just be about the business of doing something community related. You never know that mustard seed that you're putting out there will grow into a great big redwood one day. These kids will pay it forward. And I know that for a fact because I have paid it forward because I was that kid. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah. Wow. That's good stuff. Man, yeah. But, you know, one of the most profound things that you just said is that if you show you care about me, meaning the kid, mm -hmm. then when I reach that impasse, instead of showing you I don't give a damn about you and I'm going to carjack you, mm -hmm. I'll show you that I care about you too. That's big. That's, 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 that's major. That's and listen, man, as we wrap up, man, um, you know, I really appreciate both of you gentlemen joining me. John, thank you so much for hosting Sticks, Brims, and Stilettos Man Cave Conversations right here in your beautiful home and down in your man cave. Guys, um, I'm going uh, to take a few pictures. This, this place is amazing. Um, so with that, I want to thank you. Listen, family. As always, this show is brought to you by our sponsor, Huck Spirits. Check out Huck Spirits at www.huckspirits.com. In fact, last night we had a sangria and cigar event um, where we collaborated with Huck Spirits. When you log on, put in your code SBS. If you like sangria and bourbon, you're going to love this combination with Huck Spirits. And right now they have a holiday special going on when you buy multiple bottles. So when you go to the website again, www.huckspirits.com, get yourself some sangria, buy some for some family members for the holiday. I'm telling you, you won't be disappointed. And with that, gentlemen, I just want to say thank you once again for being on the show. And uh, we're going to be doing this again. Uh, we're going to be... We're going to be doing this again, and the next Man Cave conversation uh, will be hosted in my man Ernie's uh, yeah, looking forward to lovely it. home and down in his Man Cave. Yeah. So with that, we'll see you next time.